You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, episode 66, How Artists and Musicians Benefit from Cryptocurrencies with Tatiana Morose. Let's go. Hey, what's up? Welcome back, everyone, to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash, and today's show is all about the music. While I don't consider myself a musician currently, I do have a very high appreciation for the arts and music and was a percussionist at various times in my life in concerts, symphonic and marching bands, and I've even organized and run a few drum circles in Raleigh, North Carolina and Denver, Colorado. So today's guest is Tatiana Moroz. She's a singer and songwriter and a Bitcoin activist. I invited Tatiana on the show to tell us all about her new project, Artist Coin, Tatiana Coin, which integrates music and cryptocurrencies so that artists retain control of their music and have the ability to directly engage with their audience. Basically, she thinks it's in the musician's best interest to cut out the middlemen or the record labels. Also, if you enjoy these podcasts, please leave us a rating. I know, I know, what good is one more rating, right? Well, it means a lot. And I've included the full show notes as well as all the links to your favorite podcast sites, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, etc., so that you can easily leave Liberty Entrepreneurs some five-star love. You can find all the show notes to this episode on our website, www.libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash Tatiana. And that's spelled T-A-T-I-A-N-A. All right, without further ado, let's get right into the show. So Tatiana, welcome to Liberty Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. So Tatiana is a singer and songwriter, a Bitcoin enthusiast. She's releasing a new EP called Keep the Faith. And just a little background, I met you, I think, Tatiana, in December of 2013 in Buenos Aires, Argentina at the first uh, Latin American Bitcoin conference. I had never heard of you before, but then you got on stage and sang a few Bitcoin songs, and I even think maybe a Bob Dylan song or something like that. Uh, you were at that conference, weren't you? Oh, yeah. That's actually one of my absolute favorite conferences of all Bitcoin time. Um, that's when I debuted the Bitcoin jingle, which was a song that I wrote uh, for the community and to help kind of get the word out about Bitcoin to people like myself who didn't necessarily understand it. But I thought maybe I could teach them through music. Uh, so it was a it was actually a really big deal to sing to my first really big group of Bitcoiners. Um, I had done a slightly smaller gig in Atlanta a few uh, like a few months before with Jeffrey Tucker. But Buenos Aires, you can't beat it. The price now, was good, and all the people were amazing. I, it was during the first bubble. It was when Bitcoin hit a thousand for the first time. It, it was really awesome. So, Tatiana, just give us a little background of who you are and what you're passionate about. Uh, sure, of course. Um, well, this is Liberty Entrepreneurs. I'm passionate about entrepreneurship, although I didn't really know that all my life. And of course, Liberty. Ever since I was a little girl, I had a great interest in you know how we could organize mankind in a way that would be the best for everyone. And I was very deeply influenced by the singers and songwriters of the 70s and 60s, uh, that sort of revolution music, uh, folk music. And I also read a lot of uh, the dystopian novels like 1984, Brave New World, Fahrenheit 451, Animal Farm. And as I got older, I, I was a little disappointed in my own generation because we didn't have a philosophy. We didn't have a solution. We were just kind of, you know, buttered up little marshmallows. And you know, as time went on, I became more politically active. I enjoyed Dennis Kucinich very much. And while I liked Ron Paul, I couldn't really understand why he wouldn't like the EPA or why he didn't want universal health care. And eventually I found out about the Federal Reserve in 2011. And I felt like that was um, sort of a crystallizing moment. And I kind of saw where my path would go in terms of a philosophical leaning. But I also wanted to, you know, fuse that with my music. And so I started singing a lot of different kinds of music kind of about like our times. And I was 
eventually singing for Ron Paul and large groups of people during 2012, which was, of course, the big run up to the presidential election, which was a very exciting time for a lot of people. When did you did, were you involved with Ron Paul before 2012? Because that was really my first big year. Yeah, I was I got really active in the Ron Paul 2007 2008 campaign. I would say by the 2012 campaign, I started to burn out just a little bit in thinking that politics was an answer. And so that's when I started moving to economics and entrepreneurship. But I, I know that there was a, a very similar energy in both of those. Ron Paul, I, I can remember Dennis Kucinich. And, you know, it was very interesting to see someone that, quote, far left and then Ron Paul, quote, that far right. Uh, and they had a lot of the same beliefs. So that really made me start questioning this whole false dichotomy of Republicans and Democrats to run an entire nation. But yeah, a lot, a lot of learning, a lot of energy and passion back then for sure. Absolutely. Tell me how you got into Bitcoin specifically. So after seeing what a sham the election was, especially in terms of how the media kept Ron Paul out and the miscategorization of, of everything and, you know, kind of tinfoil hat wearing, um, you know, rumors about about the community, which is, of course, totally untrue. I, I just didn't think that politics was going to give me the solutions that I was seeking. And around that same time, Tony Gallippi and Stephen Pear taught me about Bitcoin. And I couldn't listen to them for longer than 10 minutes, even though they kept going. And they're really brilliant. And they were so enthusiastic. But the technology really turned me off. You know, as soon as I hear anything technical, my brain immediately turns off and my eyeballs glaze over. But I did buy some Bitcoin, and as I saw it rising pretty significantly, of course, it became a little bit more interesting. And really, when I started hanging out with Jeffrey Tucker, he sort of gave me an insight into Bitcoin, not from the technical perspective, but from the visionary perspective of what could Bitcoin do for humanity. And that's when you know I, I saw you down in Buenos Aires, and I decided to write the Bitcoin jingle. Soon thereafter, I became friends with uh, Adam B. Levine. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've gone on to create uh, the first ever artist cryptocurrency, and now he's created a platform that allows other artists to do exactly what I did or, you know, and vary it to however they want to do it, like have it to their own specifications. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. And whenever I met you, I was, I was shocked because I didn't know that cryptocurrencies were starting to take hold in like with artists or with any type of artist. You're a musician, specifically a singer and a songwriter, but it got me thinking like, okay, how could artists benefit from cryptocurrencies? Like it, it was very obvious to me how, you know, banks would be crushed with cryptocurrencies and how the small guy could control his money again. But I hadn't started thinking in that time as December, 2013 as full spectrum as I have now, when did you really start putting together the idea of Bitcoin? Or I think you're calling this artist coin and how that can really benefit our music and our arts industry. Uh, sure. So a couple of months after that Buenos Aires conference, people started talking about artist tokens and just tokens in general. That concept was uh, running around in the community. And that's uh, when I started talking with Adam. And, you know, I think part of it is that artists are natural messengers. And, you know, when you sell any product, right, you, you get either a hot chick or you get, you know, musicians or people that are good at communicating in general. And what better person than, than, you know, an artist or a musician. Uh, these are people that create an instant connection with people when they mm -hmm. sing a song. I mean, you're right. Sometimes you feel closer to an artist that you've never met than your own family, right? They're there for you in, in all times of, uh, <laughs> trouble and all your best moments. So I thought that artists could use some disruption in our space. You know, I went to Berkeley college of music in Boston and I studied music business. I went on to work in various recording studios in Manhattan but seeing a lot of different problems for artists, namely fans and funding, right? So how do I make sure that I play to more than just the waitress and the bartender? And how do I make sure that I can afford to record music and kind of get my music out there, which is very, very challenging, even for somebody who, you know, went to this good school, whatever. It's just really, really difficult business. And after working in all these different recording studios and seeing the messages that were going out there, so the artists that were getting funded basically had what I consider to be a rather base message, you know, um, oh, party all night. I mean, essentially, that's like the whole message, party and like be an idiot. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who listened to Cat Stevens and Bob Dylan, I mean, this is not, you know, going to be Congress with where I think humanity needs to go. I think art feeds the soul. 
So uh, getting back to it, we had social media and I thought that that was really helpful. But if you signed up for Friendster, you made your fr- fans there. And then you went to MySpace and you made your fans there. And then you would go to Facebook. Of course, you have to rebuild your entire fan base. And as Facebook developed, you started to have to pay to reach your very own fans. And I thought that this was kind of antithetical to the point of social media, especially when they started manipulating posts and um, kind of, you know, I think that, you know, when a fan signs up and they like a page, they want to know about what's going on. They don't want that to be filtered by whether or not I could pay Facebook $20 so I could reach 200 people or 2000 people, whatever it is. So I really wanted to have that direct fan and artist connection. Yeah, and it seems like you're taking out the middleman as well. You know, you're trying to give the artist more power and control over what they create without having to have a record label or something telling them who they need to be or what type of art they need to have on their album cover or how many songs they need or what the length should be or if it's too political or not political enough. And it seems like what Tatiana coin and artist coin and just cryptocurrencies and social, all this decentralization. I know, I know that Facebook is not a decentralized network, but it allows us to connect with each other much more easily. But it seems like if artists were finally able to control really getting paid and not have to depend on someone else to approve of their image, if you will, in order to transact and sell their records and sell their stuff, then it would give them so much more freedom as an artist to really go back to their roots and create what they want and what they find valuable and what's speaking from their soul rather than maybe what the radio wants to hear. Yeah, I mean, you you hit the nail on the head. I mean, uh, this really gets to the to the crux of it, which is free speech and free the art, right? That's one of my hashtags, free the art. Because I think the art was hijacked by the music industry. And the thing is, is that record labels provide a very valuable service. You know, to make a really big career, you do need more than just one person. And a lot of times artists aren't good at business. But the main thing that makes record labels so powerful and sort of elitist is the fact that they're giving you a loan, right? They're making an investment in you, but they want to return on that. And so they have an investment or rather an incentive to make sure that your music is palpable to the most people possible. And when you're experimenting with art, sometimes you have some hits, some misses, and that's how, you know, you make something genuine. So they can't really take on that risk. And with artist coins, what you're doing is, is you're kind of building on the idea of a crowdfunding platform or a Patreon. But instead of giving people a fixed prize, you're giving them a lot more flexibility for their investment. So if you want to donate right now, we are, we're selling Tatiana coin. If you want to do a regular crowd fund for Tatiana, you know, you would give me $50, you would get a t-shirt and that would be at the end of it. You couldn't transfer that t-shirt around. Right. You would just have to wear it and that's it. But with an artist coin, instead you're given $50 worth of Tatiana coins. So you can use them now to buy whatever you want from the store. You can break them up and send $5 worth to each of your friends. Cause you're so excited about my music and you want them to hear it. Or you can sell it later on. You say, oh, I don't know. I never use this. And there's actual transferability there. Yeah, it's a really interesting idea because people give money to things like Kickstarters and stuff like that all the time. And why not have a coin with an artist? So like, hey, I'm going to release this album. Right. It's like a crowdsource funding type thing. You know, I'll send you a copy of the album if you do donate $50 beforehand. You know, I'm trying to determine what the demand is for this type of music and you award them $50 worth of Tatiana coin. I I don't know how much that is. I mean, I assume that you would have a Bitcoin peg or something like that, but we'll just, we'll just ignore that. But then what I can do is maybe one of your singles would take, I don't know, three Tatiana coins on your website. And so not only now do I get the full album and maybe a t-shirt for my $50 donation to you, but I can send that $50 $50 worth of Tatiana coin to 10 of my friends and they can come to your website and basically do a kind of like a micro payment to get your album for free with the Tatiana coin that they've been given. It's, it's a really great way to make music even more social than it is by offering a coin that is redeemable in your own store. That's, that's really innovative. Thank you. Well, you know, that was really what it was about to me is that connection. And I don't want You know, I don't want Facebook in between me and you, right? Because we just don't need that anymore. And I find those kinds of companies to be, you know, I mean, I use them, but 
the privacy aspects are pretty poor and I don't think of it as something that is benefiting the community as much as something that's taking, you know, we're the product there. Whereas with an artist coin, it's something where the fan and the artist have a genuine bond. It's like a friendship, you know, but you have a messaging layer, you have the ability to have enhanced experiences. So the tokens can not only act as digital gift certificates, but you can do different kinds of features. So almost like a key that lets you into a room. So certain mm-hmm. exclusive content or a online event or an in-person event, you know, if you have the right tokens, you can enter. And then we also came up with a solution, which we certainly weren't looking for, but I think is pretty innovative as well as making a digital album token. So previously, like, okay, so now if you buy music on iTunes, right, you spend $10, you get an album, but you can't share that music with me. You can't share it with your listeners. You can only listen to it with your license on iTunes. And that's Mm -hmm. not as flexible as it used to be where, you know, if you bought a CD, you can lend it to your friend, you could sell it, whatever. You actually own that thing, right? You can listen to it on multiple platforms. So with the album token, we've brought back digital scarcity into an industry that's basically been turned into, you know, a mass consumption library where it's basically difficult to even find your way around there unless you know what you're looking for or you have time on your hands. This is a little bit more of a curation element. This is a more sincere um, fan support network. And when people are streaming music, the artist is getting two cents a stream, whereas on a streaming platform, a traditional one, they're getting 0.001 or whatever it is, cents per stream. So basically, we're 20 times more. Um, I was really surprised when I found out that on those streaming platforms, if you have your song played a million times, you get a thousand dollars. Oh my goodness. That is ridiculous. And and with ours, you'd get 20 grand, which still it's crazy. You know, a million times somebody plays your song and you get a thousand bucks. Come on. That's ridiculous. Nobody's going to be able to record their music that way. I've got a lot of time, Tatiana. I'm just going to go click, play, 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 play and all your stuff. (laughs) Thank you. You know, it's, it reminds me of Uber and an Airbnb and all of the sharing economy stuff that is is really starting to come to the forefront as technology advances. Because I can remember, I was I was one of the first people on Napster. I was one of the first people in the world sharing uh, music on Napster back in 1999, and I can remember thinking like. There was instant community there. You you were able to not only in the real world were you able to share your CDs and everybody did it. We shared tapes, we shared CDs. I mean, who didn't buy a really awesome CD like the Green Day Dookie CD and give it to one of their friends? Man, like you've got to hear this CD, right? Then all of a sudden, we have this amazing platform called the internet that we're able to now share music. But instead of being innovative like what you're doing with Tatiana Coin and allowing people to basically unlock music and share music that they can unlock rather than rather than looking at innovative ways to help people use this new platform that's the internet to share music they try to just shut it down shut it down shut it down but the the market was saying no we want to share music figure out a way to allow us to share music because we want that community and i think what you're doing in having, you know, I think you called it an album coin or basically a way to prove that at that moment you have the rights to listen to that album, right? Now, if I give that coin to someone else, then that person would have the key, if you will, to that little digital blockchain locker to unlock and listen to your album. And I wouldn't, it would literally be like passing a CD to someone they listen to my CD. I can no longer do it, but you're bringing that back. And I, I didn't really realize that you were doing that before this interview, Tatiana. I'm really interested to keep up with, with how that works. Coming from someone who's been file sharing both legally and illegally for the better part of 20 years now. Wow, that's wild. You know, I never got into Napster, but it's funny that you bring them up because um, there's a film by Alex Winter who did a great movie, uh, The Deep Web, about Ross Ulbricht. And Alex Winter did a movie about Napster. And and even though I never used Napster because I couldn't figure it out, um, one of the things that he talks about is that it wasn't about stealing music. It was about that community. And that's really what we're trying to build out with what we've created with Token.fm and with Artist Coins and artist tokens, you know, this is our way of building up on those ideas of sharing community. And even we have this cool thing where if you play my music, 
I get my two cents per stream, but on your playlist, you also get a small little tiny kickback for playing my music if people are playing it off of your player. So it's like you're this almost this little radio station that anytime anybody listens to music on your radio station, you get paid and artists get paid. So that curation element, I don't know, I think it has a lot of growth potential and, and it's embarrassing. Sometimes people, they ask me, oh, what music do you listen to? And I'm like naming people from 50 years ago because I don't have time to go sifting through these mass consumption libraries. But I love when a friend recommends mm -hmm. music and I think that a lot of people feel the same way. It's almost like bringing back the mixtape. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. And it, bringing back the mix CD to, oh, it's just m music and I have a long, rich history together. And that's one of the reasons I was really excited to have you on the show. You mentioned Ross Ulbrich just very quickly. Who is he? What's your relationship with him? And I think that he designed your album cover for your upcoming EP, Keep the Faith. Uh, yes, actually. So along my travels, I became good friends with Lynn Ulbricht, who is the mother of Ross Ulbricht. Ross Ulbricht is the alleged creator of the Silk Road website, which was a free market experiment that ended up being a harm reduction tool in the drug industry. You know, they had a certain code, so you couldn't sell things that were bad for other people, but you could sell, you know, like if it was drugs or if it was, you know, medicine, something that basically related to you. The the philosophy was you own your body, you have the right to put into it whatever you want, as long as you're not hurting somebody else. Right. Very strong, no child pornography, no like really dirty stuff. They didn't accept. You were really ostracized and kicked off there if you broke the moral code of the website. I, I was never actually on it. I've done a lot of reading about it, but yeah, yeah sorry. Go continue, Tatiana. Well, I think that that's good to point out because this story has been so uh, misrepresented in the media and people think, oh, you know, you could murder for hire and guns and all this nonsense. They actually didn't really sell that there. Um, it was very against the code. These were very peaceful people that were really libertarians and, and searching for a more free world, whether or not they were libertarian. And so I personally think that the problem and the reason why this attracted the attention of the government is because it was the first real killer app, if you will, for Bitcoin. And because now Bitcoin had a playground where it could actually have utility, right. um, this drove the price up significantly. And it caught sure. the eye of um, the head of the banking committee, uh, Chuck Schumer. So he pretended it was about drugs. And this is, of course, this part is my own opinion. But either way, they arrested Ross Ulbricht, who is quite young, very, um, you know, scholarship for physics and Eagle Scout and never had, you know, a problem in his life. And they arrested him. And during that arrest, there were and the trial that followed, there was a lot of corruption. There was a lot of breaking of protocol. There were a lot of constitutional violations. And it ended up that Ross was sentenced to double life plus 40 years um, mm. for inventing a website. All nonviolent crimes. There were no victims. And yet, um, you know, non victim came forward. So he's actually paying for what a lot of people believe to be his political beliefs. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I became friends with Ross. I've gone to visit him in the prison. He's just as impressive as, as anybody would imagine. You know, he has a little bit of a hero thing going on, but he really is an incredible young man. And I made him some pictures for Christmas and for his birthday. So for my birthday, he drew a picture of me. And what I decided was I would use this as the album cover to sort of illustrate how artists' voices have been stifled and how if I was, you know, signed to a major record label, they're not going to let me have a political dissident drawing my album cover, right? Because right. the message is that controlled now. Mm. And after going and visiting the prison and seeing just how devastating the drug war is, not only on the prisoners, but on the families and the impact that that has over generations, I think that this is a perfect melding of art and activism. And I'm very excited to be able to talk about it um, and, and push the envelope on this subject because I think that's that's a very important role for artists in this society. Yeah. And whenever you can control your money and when you can control how you can interact with your community with a common money or with a money that doesn't require the approval of someone else, be it the government or the banking system or the you know, large record labels, et cetera, then you are able to express yourself more freely. And I think that that's the main thing that I'm taking away from this interview, Tatiana, is because of the decentralized nature and the the peer-to-peer -peer nature of cryptocurrencies, it puts you in control 
of what you want to produce and how you want to connect, express yourself and build your community. And it's just a really beautiful thing to finally give just people in general, but artists just as much or more so that freedom again. And, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to start wrapping up here, Tatiana, and go into what I consider the freedom segment. How has being uh, an entrepreneur and an artist and understanding the integration of freedom and cryptocurrencies in general created more freedom in your own personal life. Okay. So when I created Tatiana coin, I was very unaware of how much work would go into it. And I was unaware of just all the challenges that would be presented. But at the same time, I can't imagine being anyone else. And I think that this is something that's sort of like an art, uh, like an artistic mindset is that we're kind of natural entrepreneurs and our creativity allows us to be flexible. And I think that rolling with the punches, even though the punches hurt and sometimes I might cry, has been an incredibly freeing experience because now I feel more confident that I can take on other challenges and, and really like kind of try and disrupt things in a way that I feel very blessed to be able to do. I mean, so many incredible people and my mind is freed constantly with new ideas and to be able to engage in that way is something that I'm, I'm very happy to be able to do. And, and I'm very excited to bring other people into it because I think other artists are going to find this to be, you know, don't get scared that it's all techie. It's actually one of the most creative spaces possible. It brings together such a cross section of different kinds of businesses and different kinds of people. And I mean, what's better than that? You, you free yourself of all kinds of uh, constraints of your area and you, you expand your mind. It's so awesome, Tatiana. What advice, if any, would you have for other artists who might be struggling or or see the big heavy dark cloud of the record labels and stuff above their head and preventing them from really getting their music out well i would love for them to join us you know we're we're really testing things out right now and we're looking for artists to sign up but beyond that i mean you know sometimes i wonder right because people say oh don't give up but what if you're really bad at your talent and and you maybe you should give up but I think that if people, you know, try and be grateful for what they do have and remain open minded, um, I think that they can be fulfilled by this space and and others. You know, there's all this innovation and exciting stuff going on. We're so lucky that we have so much technology that connects us to one another. So I would encourage people to not be afraid of technology. Join us or, you know, think about joining with other people in your community and connecting with people online, you know, it's, it's a kind of a weird mix that we could do things both in person and in online and connect with so many people. So you just have to be, I think, creative and diligent. And actually I'm going to, I'm going to give you a plug, not even on purpose, but so Ash has a Liberty entrepreneur VAs and I just hired them. I'm so excited because, you know, being an artist gets really, really tiresome. So don't try and do it yourself. Think of a way where you can get a really affordable virtual assistant to help you with all the stuff because this way you won't be as overwhelmed. I mean, record labels are powerful for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons why they're successful is because they have big teams. And I think affording a team is really difficult. So I'm very excited to have um, one of you guys' Uh, folks helping me out to launch the record because it's a lot of work. So don't be afraid to ask for some help. Oh, thank you so much, Tatiana. I really appreciate that. I know that you interviewed your top three virtual assistant finalists today and everything went well. It just really pleases me. I, a lot of appreciation for my virtual assistants, uh, Cherry and Ted's who are on my recruitment team that helped you along the way. And, you know, if I can help people like you build freedom in their life, then that's, that's truly what my mission in life is now. Uh, Tatiana Moroz, you are absolutely a Liberty entrepreneur. If anyone from my audience would like to contact you, how should they do it? Uh, they can go to my website, tatianacoin.com, T-A-T-I-A-N-A coin. Dot com. They can go to token.fm and find out more about the platform. And I'm um, on Twitter, Queen Tatiana. And I've also got a podcast, The Tatiana Show, that airs on a number of different um, sites. So they can uh, look that up as well. And when is your new EP, Keep the Faith, released? Oh, of course, I should mention that. Uh, March 31st is the new EP, uh, Keep the Faith. And I would love it if people would support me and uh, get your Tatiana coin at the site. And, you know, you don't have to use Bitcoin or anything if people aren't onboarded into Bitcoin yet. But... Hopefully they will be soon. And what's the site they can go to to find directly about Keep the Faith? 
Uh, right on my website, TatianaCoin.com. Awesome, Tatiana. Thank you so much for coming on Liberty Entrepreneurs. I really appreciate what you're building. Thanks so much, Ash. All right. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to Liberty Entrepreneurs, episode 66, How Artists and Musicians Benefit from Cryptocurrencies with Tatiana Moroz. Also, don't forget about her new EP, Keep the Faith, being released in just a few short days. Her website is tatianacoin.com. And for more information, check it out. All the links are in the show notes. Until next time, keep building freedom.